Hey guys, welcome to another edition of CM10 on a Android phone. And over here we have the uh, recently sold out Nexus 4. Well, actually the 8GB was sold out yesterday on the Play Store. Uh, the 16GB is still for sale, but it's going to take you weeks to get it. So uh, it's one of those things where if you want to wait, go ahead and wait. Uh, the aftermarket prices of these devices are ridiculous. I mean, the 8GB are going for 480 500, the 16's up to $600, I've seen on Craigslist, eBay, etc. So, uh, quite pricey considering the Google Play Store price is $299 and $349 respectively. Uh, that's without tax and shipping. So anyways, here we got CM10 uh, running on the Nexus 4. Uh, this would be the nightly build of uh, nightly build 12.3. Uh, you can see right there, Mako. Uh, it's got the stock uh, kernel stock kernel that comes with the ROM. Uh, you can see 4.2.1 jelly bean. Uh, you get the little jelly beans, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, the 12.4 version was just released actually today, but I, it, you know, it's minor changes uh, via the change log. I just wanted to go ahead and show you a few of the features here on CM10 and the benefit of uh, ROMing your, of rooting your phone and installing this ROM. Okay, number one right off the bat, I know a lot of complaints that people have with the Nexus is battery life. So, is the battery life on CM10 better than stock? Yes, it is definitely better. Now, there are kernels that you can flash that improve your battery life. There are CPU apps, such as SetCPU, that you can install as well, that allow you to do certain power uh, saving features that would also save you battery, as well as apps like Juice Defender. But just right off the bat, the battery life on this device, uh, as it stands, uh, is better than stock. Is it much better? Uh, it's really subjective. It's definitely better. Um, you know, I have 45 minutes of screen time, and what is my battery at? It's at about 87%. So 13%, you know, down drained off an hour, and two hours of use, and about an hour of screen time, a little less than an hour, which isn't too great. I mean, again, it's not great battery life, but it's definitely better than stock. Uh, now, in terms of the features, you're going to get pretty much every single feature that you get in the stock build. Uh, that includes swiping up here for Google Now, as you can see. Uh, there's the Lakers. Lakers lost to Orlando Magic, uh, which was, you know, what can you say about that? Uh, but in terms of its daily use, it has exactly all the same features that you get on the stock build, but it's much more smoother, it's much more fluid, which is kind of a hard, you know, I mean, it's, it's rough to really differentiate because the stock build is so fluid and so smooth that it's really it's really tough to tell a difference right off the bat, but you tell after a few days of, use, of usage, you can tell that it's definitely uh, got much more of a smoother feel to it, fluid Jelly Bean uh, Project Butter Feel with 4.2.1, which is the most recent build of Android. Uh, you can see here you got the app drawer, the widget drawer, very smooth, very fluid. Um, let me just go to the lock screen here. The, you got the uh, Jelly Bean lock screen. You swipe to the left, you can add widgets. Swipe to the right, and you get to your camera. Uh, you can also, you know, hold the widget and remove it. You can unlock it and go to that certain app. Uh, so there's a flurry, ex again, exact same features that you get with the stock 4.2, 4.2.1 build. Uh, Google now very responsive. Let me just give Tell me the weather. It's 67 degrees and clear in Glendale. And then you can go ahead and swipe that away. What is 6 times 2 divided by 9 plus 3? The answer is 4.33. Who is Barack Obama? There you go. Who is the president of the UK? I meant to say prime minister. I meant to say prime minister. Okay, so in any case, uh, you got Google Now with all of its glory. Uh, you got the uh, notification drawer with the quick uh, with the quick uh, quick options right there, so you can customize that to your liking. You can add more than four. Um, you can switch over and you get the uh, secondary tab, obviously, which takes you to all those cool uh, Google uh, Jelly Bean 4.2 features. Uh, you got the new Gmail app, which allows you to swipe away the Gmail to archive them or to delete them. Um, that's you know cool. I still don't have Pinch Zoom. I, 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 I'm assuming that it's something that's going to be released in future builds, but Pinch Zoom is still not available for the Gmail app. 
Uh, another great addition would be the uh, advent of the web browser, the smoothness of the web browser. It's really quite a fluid experience. Um, it's uh, definitely improved over previous builds. I want to go show you. I want to show you guys uh, Firefox here real quick, uh, just to give you an idea of Firefox and fluidity of Firefox. If I can get my internet to actually load something, there you go. Okay, Firefox is uh, you can you can download this in the Play Store. It's free. It's ad free, and you could just see the pinch zoom on Firefox is very very smooth. You get that same Windows Phone iOS inertia type effects. Um, you know that you you rarely see in Android and Android rather you get that blue uh, shadowy kind of deal when you swipe up swipe down or swipe to the left or right whereas with this uh, you do get that inertia effect very fluid very smooth everything is super responsive you know you click on something you get there now is Mozilla buggy certainly I've had some lags crashes and, and um, black screens of death but uh, if you can overlook the bugs and wait for the uh, future updates uh, then you will be pleasantly surprised with Mozilla's fluidity and smoothness. Much flu much more fluid and smooth than Chrome and the stock WebKit browser, but definitely not as responsive, or definitely not as quick in terms of its page rendering and loading. You can see the stock browser very smooth. Um, it's loading, and you get very to little, no checkerboards whatsoever, no white screens. Everything loads immediately. Uh, you know, the, inertia, the effect of the scrolling is to the strength of how hard you scroll. Uh, again, this isn't a, a CM10 feature, but you know the difference here is that with the regular stock ROM, you're going to get Chrome. Whereas with this, you get the stock WebKit browser, which I've heard a lot of people are more comfortable with. And then you can go ahead and install Chrome from the Play Store. Uh, you know, you you, got, you can swipe away your tabs here. Now, just to show you guys the settings menu, uh, here you got the settings menu. You get the same set, most of the same settings that you get in the uh, stock in the CM10 version of, of the Galaxy S3, for example, which I have videos of uh, grid size, etc. You can you can change all that. You can do uh, change the drawer in terms of whether or not you want a page indicator. Uh, you got dock options. You know, you got um, various. Uh, let me just go ahead and go back here. Various general, I believe, takes you to auto rotate. Yes. You got uh, certain system options here, uh, so status bar notification. You can you know change the look and feel of your uh, battery icon, whether you want the percentage circle, or you want it to look normal without a percentage, or you can remove it altogether. You got power menu, notification light. You can change the notification light color, which I think is really cool, um, and the way that it actually runs uh, specific to your apps. Uh, you got um, you know most pretty much all of the stock. Android uh, 4.2 features here. Now one thing you don't get, or at least I don't have, I don't know why, maybe it was a bad flash or maybe just um, in this specific nightly version, but I don't have performance. Now, when I had performance flashed on the previous build of the nightly CM10, uh, it had issues with, under, uh, with the minimum CPU frequency. So basically what was happening was uh, the minimum CPU frequency was always at 10, uh, at 1000 gigahertz, or it's 1 gigahertz. It wouldn't allow me to drop that to 384, uh, even though at times I saw it fluctuate. For whatever reason, it was stuck at 1080 or 1084, something around that range, 1086. So uh, now, I guess, without that option here, I don't know what the minimum frequency is, but I will tell you this, that at a, at a gig at minimum, this thing runs fluid smooth. I mean, I mean, this thing is so smooth, and it's so fluid, and it's so responsive. Everything is just right to the touch. Uh, the touch on it is immediate. Uh, exiting out apps immediate. You know, and, and here let me give, let me show you guys a new feature of 4.2 Jelly Bean here that you didn't get with 4.1. So let's say I'm at the Play Store or any app, for example, and let's say I want to multitask. See what happens now is it actually minimizes your app to the multitasking tray, whereas before it would leave you in that certain app. And you can close off all the other apps. Now it's a little bit different. You can actually minimize it, and it, it, it actually minimizes that certain app that you're in in the in the multitasking tray. So um, you know nothing really serious or or super intuitive, but just a new feature. Uh, now, how does it run the camera? Runs the camera quite well. Uh, works, you know, just as the stock build would work. Same options where you touch the home screen to get all of your various options. Takes quick pictures. Um, you swipe and you can get your camera and your pictures right there. Uh, you know, pinch zoom, um, swipe up to delete. You know, you can undo it. It's uh, you know very fluid, very smooth. Um, absolutely no lag whatsoever. And there's my new iPod Touch case or my new iPod Touch. Um, so it's quite fluid, quite smooth, works quite well. Uh, you got the editing options. Obviously, the camera does have the panorama options and the 360 option that you get with the stock build. Um, 
you know, there's obviously all of the regular Google Talk, Calendar, People, Clock, etc. Uh, the new clock, the 4.2 clock is in here, and the new alarm, where it's, the interface is completely different. I really like this. This is really nice looking. I love that they've implemented the swipe feature and made it consistent throughout the OS, not just the notification bar where you can swipe and minimize and maximize certain things, but it, it, in everything, it's very consistent. Uh, and you know you got obviously Google Play Music. The widget's quite different. It looks a lot better. The reason why it's shrunk like that is because I've changed the grid to five icons. So everything else is kind of shrunk. Uh, there are certain widgets that you can resize, but these you can't. I'd love to see in future builds the ability to resize every widget, uh, not just certain ones. You know, I can resize the clock, but I can't resize Google Play Music. So I'd like to see them, um, th whether or not it's built into CM10 or whether or not it's built into the stock build, I'd like to see them um, allow us to resize any and all widgets. Now, uh, the, the dialer is, again, similar. You got the similar dialer like it, like the color schemes, contacts, obviously you got those contacts, and then you have your people contacts, which is the blue, light bluish white color scheme. Um, you have your typical uh, CM10 apps, such as the file manager. Uh, DSP manager is right here, you got DSP manager. Uh, you have basically, uh, again, all your regular Google apps that you would get with the stock build. Absolutely no bloatware whatsoever. Very stable. Uh, calls sound good. Netflix works. YouTube works well. Videos load fine. Sound is good. I uh, haven't really noticed many bugs. I have noticed the, the volume mute once in a while after watching a Netflix video, but it's something that within a few seconds um, goes back to normal. So here's obviously the YouTube app. Um, you can see the videos on YouTube. You know, they run quite well. Absolutely no issues here with YouTube. You rotate it and you get the full screen. Sorry, my data here is really bad. And again, just to show you this multitasking feature, so if I click right here, okay, see, it took me out of YouTube, and now it takes me to the rest of my uh, apps that I have that are currently multitasked, or that are currently open. I just closed out of all of them. Um, you know, just a basic consensus on how I feel about this app. Battery life is, or how I feel about this ROM. Battery life is better. Uh, to be honest with you, these early nightly builds are much more fluid than the early builds that we got with the S3 uh, CM10. Uh, they, I think the CyanogenMod Mod team has done a fantastic job of uh, optimizing this this ROM for this phone because uh, I mean you know running games it, it's it's so good it's so fluid you know what game I wish they install they uh, Android would get Pitfall for iOS now that's a fantastic game fluidity beautiful uh, you know I compared the graphics between the quad core on this and the S3's dual core. Uh, running Subway Surf, which are both quite smooth, and I gotta say, it's um, the colors and the and you can see those shadows on the coins. You don't get that with the S3, uh, so it's much it's much more graphic intensive because you got a quad core processor. Very smooth. You can see no lag whatsoever. Responsive to my touch. What I love about this device is the screen is so beautiful. It gives you that again, I, and I hate to constantly go back to this, but it's it's basically the measuring stick when it comes to fluidity. That iOS smoothness. You know, and that iOS touch fluidity. And now if I want to exit, I just go home and it's immediate. I want to do my multitasking, I exit out and it's immediate. So everything, immediate to your touch. Um, like if you want to change the uh, status bar, uh, if I can't believe it's systems, status, no, sorry, excuse me. Systems, power menu. So the power menu you can, you can add and you can remove certain things right here as you can see. Oh, no, that's the power menu, excuse me. Power menu being when you hold the home button, uh, you can reboot into... Um, you can reboot into recovery, etc. So let's see. I just want to go ahead and there it is. Notification drawer. So you, you know you can change the widget buttons around. Uh, there's plenty of them, plenty of them. You can change them, you can arrange them how you'd like. Very slippery, this phone, I gotta say. It slips off of everything that I put it on top of. Right now, I have it on top of a passport of all things because if I put it on this table, it'll just constantly slip around whenever I try to, you know, move, move around the screen. So uh, that's one, you know, I wouldn't say it's a flaw, but uh, that's what you get with a big glass back on the device. All right, other words, other, other than that, um, there's really nothing else to emphasize on. The maps are the same. Um, the maps, you know, 
you still got the 3D maps and everything and all the good stuff that comes with Google Maps. Uh, location pretty much locks in immediately. Let me just go ahead and, or GPS locks in immediately. If I can just go ahead, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to do when I'm looking at the screen. Let me just, there we go. All right, let me see if I can go ahead and uh, navigate somewhere here. Yeah, you know, I barely have any reception here, so this may take a minute. But um, generally speaking, when you have a good signal, it will lock in on the GPS quite quickly. Uh, right now, it's not really a uh, good representation because I don't have much reception here, if at all, uh, which is always a problem in my house, you know, because everywhere in my town, I get great speeds. Uh, let me show you my speed test here for T-Mobile. I get, you know, pretty decent speed, 17, you know, 12, 15, 14 on the high end, 12, 11, 18. Um, so good speeds, except for in my house, I get like two megabytes, one if that. Um, so that's that's an issue for me. But otherwise, there you guys go. Just wanted to go on ahead and emphasize on CM10. Is it a stable build? Yes. Is it a ROM that you should look into a flashing if you're interested in it? Yes. Uh, it doesn't veer away from the stock experience that you get with the device. Uh, it, it, the updates are released, the nightly updates are released almost every night, which is fantastic. I always felt that that was a, a very, very big plus for Cyanogen Mod and the Cyanogen Mod team. It's blazing fast, it's stable, um, it's got all the features that you'd want in 4.2 Jelly Bean. There's your viewing angle right there. Um, it's customizable to your liking. You can customize the uh, icons and the rows and the, the uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, in terms of whether or not you do want to customize it or you just want to leave it looking like it would look when you buy the Nexus 4 out of the box. Battery life is improved. Um, video quality is good. Obviously, you get the other features such as CM wallpapers, et cetera, et cetera, uh, live wallpapers, uh, Gmail app, all the apps are compatible. I haven't found any compatibility issues. And other than that, um, it's it's a nice nice ROM if you want to look into it. If you're interested in flashing this, I'll go ahead and post the links below to the XDA uh, site to where you can find this ROM. Uh, if you want to root the device, uh, that's something that you're going to have to find on XDA as well. All right, guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please go ahead and ask me, and I'll try to respond uh, in a prompt fashion. Thank you, and have a good day.